This guy are sick. Doki Doki! <sighs> We're back. This guy are sick. This guy are sick. That has to be done, in, uh, done on purpose, right? That, that message has to be bad on purpose. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen of that humble internet. My name is Ryan, aka The Ryan Man, but I hope hope you already knew that. We're going back into Doki Doki Literature Club, the Blue Skies mod. The mod that seems to turn the game into an actual, quote-unquote, wholesome, my guard is still up, love story adventure. <laughs> so far, as of right now, while many things are different, we're still the same. We're still going through the original plot of Doki Doki, it seems. You know, we're about to hit the festival. Oh my god, we're actually going to hit... the fucking festival. Oh my god. Oh my god. <clears throat> well, nothing to it but to get to it. But, but to do it! What did I do for Siori's voice? The voice that always just seems to change. I'm the worst voice actor of all time. <laughs> like if I came in every day for an actual job of voice acting, and I could never remember how I was supposed to do the, the person's voice, so it was just always changing. Hmm, not really. Sorry, did you want to talk? I mean, we don't have to if you're thinking about stuff. What was I even doing last episode? No, no, it's nice talking to you. Oh, that's right, I think she, I gave her a slight autistic tone? I'm not trying to be mean, it's just I don't know how to do many female voices. <laughs> um... I was, you know, thinking about something from earlier. It's nice that we... Uh, then never mind. It's it's nothing. <laughs> You're sounding a little like Yuri right now. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh huh. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I, I guess I just have a question for you, Ryan. What's up? Siori clears her throat before speaking. <coughs> so. Let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? I don't know. This really depends on where she lives. If she lives like 30 minutes in the opposite direction, I'm gonna give her like 20 cents for the cab and wish her the best of luck because that's the kind of guy I am. That's a showerish thing, right? <laughs> it's like, hmm, that's a dangerous neighborhood. Here, take some of my ammo! <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it's just really funny in my head picturing. You know, we're supposed to be in fucking high school, and I'm like, it's like, wait, take some of my ammo! <laughs> Pulls out! Like a couple of bandoliers worth of ammunition. Uh, my high school days were crazy. I went to Catholic school, you guys don't understand. It was a fucking beast. What kind of fucking question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I mean, oh great, it's one of those decide the fate of the universe questions. Well... Hmm. I mean... I guess for right now, for the sake of the story, since we've already been picking the Yuri poem plotline, but if you ask me personally... Like, me personally, never mind... Now remember, you can't treat people... Thank you, you and me and her, a love story for this bit of life advice. You can't treat people like it's a visual, like it's a, like, like they're visual novel characters. 
So honestly, I suppose that if it wasn't that far off, that far away, I mean, not too f out of my own way when I would like to get home, if I was honestly asked, and those parameters were met, I'd be like, I mean, it's it doesn't it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, we can walk. Yeah, I, I can walk with you while you're going home. You obviously you obviously want to chew the fat some more, because apparently we don't have fucking bones. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why is the thought of that make my heart go doki doki? I mean. Given how hard it is for her to socialize... Oh my god, that's another thing that my character, aka me, aka him, has brought up. Yuri is an incredibly awkward fucking person! Do you have any idea what that would probably do to her if you said, No, walk home by yourself! I mean, now again, personally, that... You know, hold on. We're, we're not heartless here. We were like... Oh man, I can't today, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll stand on the roof and cover you. <laughs> Hold on. And that to me is the makings of a good friend, damn it! If you can't if you can't charge into Mordor with them, then if but if you are a friend, if you are a good person, you will at least provide covery fire. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED Talk! <laughs> Isn't she so beautiful and smart? Well, she kind of shares my love for horror. That also literally has nothing to do with what I just fucking said. You're putting words in my mouth. You see, if I'm covering you, you gotta be pr you gotta be careful that I'm not covering you with blanks. <laughs> you admitted it. Jesus, so fucking please, please do not hang yourself. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to fucking happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about- You like to think about me walking home with other people. Not that there's anything romantic, but you seem to- My sight's okay with this? Hey, right, this is good enough. Okay, so I want to be covering you, by the way with this 22. I would use something that actually has more kick. Unless the things that I'm covering you from are still within, let's see, a relatively close distance. So that way, you know, you you penetrate the skull, it's not gonna punch out the back. It, it really makes cleanup very nice. What am I covering you from? Look, again, I went to Catholic school. <laughs> you don't want to know something. You don't, you don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. Don't you think that maybe she'd be more fun to walk home with? I don't know, fuck, Siori. I'm sure we have a goggle of laughs during our walks home. Why don't we... I've got it! Why don't we all walk home together? That way, we can walk in wedge formation, you know? I frown. Where did she... Where, where did this come from? Nani? I mean, I guess it could be interesting, I guess. I don't fucking know. But even if I did walk with her, it's not like she'd be replacing you or anything. Everyone is different. Everyone's a different rainbow. That makes no sense. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off, and I'm left feeling awkward. 
Bravo! But it was, it, it, it was make it, make it doubly sure I'm still going about recording. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. Well, guess what? We're gonna have to take it away from her! <laughs> That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Siri and I part ways without saying another word. I reach my house and open the door. I'm home. People who are not here. Ellipses. No response. I'm alone. As usual. It's just me and my cache of what I mean. It's just me. I mumble that part to myself. Talking to myself as I'm as if I'm the protagonist of a manga or game. I must be going stir crazy. Mom is still out on her business trip. She's never home anymore. I miss her. But I don't blame her for anything. It's hard enough providing for yourself, let alone a kid. Since I'm alone, I decided to make an instant meal for dinner. Digging through my cabinets, I find some old soup cans. Hmm. Miso soup sounds good. You wanna know? Do you wanna know what's gonna go great with that soup? <laughs> you know it's coming. <laughs> it would go with a nice cold beverage of ya belly. Ya belly! This episode has been brought to you by ya belly. Put it in your mouth and drink it! While it cooks, my mind wanders back to my performance earlier. That daydream was so vivid, so realistic. Can I really pull off that performance again? But this time in front of a crowd? It wasn't even that great in the first place. Just doing it in front of the girls was nerve-wracking. Guess I'm not really used to being around people again. Maybe that's it. Uh, oh my god, that one snuck up on me. I'm sorry. Thinking about it, I guess I've been kind of subconsciously isolating myself from people ever since the divorce. I forgot about that. Was that ever mentioned? Was that mentioned before in this mod? That I, I, I completely put that in the back of my skull, never to be heard from again. I was safely assuming the dad was dead. Before it even, in some cases. I wonder when I started shunning myself. Maybe that's part of why Siora and I drifted apart over the past few years. It wasn't intentional or anything. It just happened. Or at least, I don't think it was intentional. But I'm glad I got to reconnect with her in the literature club. It's giving me something to do, something to look forward to that isn't anime or video games. Talking with the girls just made me feel appreciated. It's a nice feeling, something that's been missing for me ever since the divorce. Maybe that's why Siori likes walking home with me. It makes her feel appreciated. Siori, what have I done? The more I think about it, the more, I, the more concerned for her I get. She said some pretty weird stuff. But I guess people just have their off days. <laughs> Buddy, my compadre, my comrade, you should see me on my fucking off days. Maybe she's just changed a little bit over the years. Pretty normal, right? I like to think I'd be, uh, I'd be able to tell her something. I failed. I, f I failed all of you. I'd like to think I'd be able to tell if something was up with her. Although, given our recent distance, I'm not so sure. Sure, we started talking again, but there's a lot of lost time. Maybe that'll change, and we'll get back to how we used to. Beep beep. Oh no. <laughs> It's beep, not boop. I actually panicked a little bit and reached for something when I thought AoE had to <laughs> fucking reached into this game. I hope. That is adorable. I'm pretty sure I said this again uh, before, but that is adorable. Look at this. This was so fucking cute. It's like, I want. Oh, I should probably. I could probably put the rifle down. 
Reiner, do you just all do you just always have shit with and on you? Like, never mind that. I'm gonna skip this because you don't need to see me try to be creative. Hello, Monica. We're going to get to you in a second. I need my comfort gun. Okay. I feel better again. We're going to get to you in a second. We're still in the old is new, and the new is still old, but we haven't gone into the new new yet. <clears throat> but then again, I think we're about to. I think we're actually going to hit the festival. We're about to hit that new 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 new. Oh, man. As I try to readjust... Okay, how do I really do my Monica voice? I did it for- I, it's, it's my Lily voice from Kato Chocho. I, I try to sound elegant. It's like, but how exactly do I sound elegant? I, I suppose what I did for my Monica voice to try and get myself up here. I tried to picture myself, okay, do your best Tim Curry from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And then you just... Scale it back a little bit, darling. And then suddenly, oh man. You see, we still sound elegant. <laughs> I have probably at least 67.3% of you right now imagining me in the <laughs> in that role in that movie. <laughs> I'm not- I'm not singing a song. I'm not doing it. I'm just a sweet transvestite from transsexual transsexual no, no, we can't. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. We're not gonna do it. <laughs> this is your brain at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> the last one here. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna I'm going to vomit everywhere. I need a moment. I I I need a goddamn minute. <laughs> <laughs> Just seven days! <laughs> I can't <laughs> I love that fucking movie! Everyone's late from time to time. <sighs> Besides, you've been working hard, so I think you deserve some slack. I guess so. I'm usually pretty punctual, but I, I just lost track of the time today. You... what made you forget the time? Ah, it's a funny story, actually. 
I recently decided to learn how to play the piano, so I was practicing it just now. What a queen! Qu what a queen thing! I'm not gonna break it out. I was learning how to play the, the the bagpipes. I'm not gonna break out my practice flute. No, not now. That's too much hassle. That's probably why I didn't notice the school bell going off. You can play the piano. That's quite impressive. I've always wanted to learn an instrument myself. Me too. I had two. I have two instruments that I've always wanted to learn. One I'm learning right now, the bagpipes, and the other one that I always wanted to learn was the saxophone. I don't know why. <laughs> it's not as cool as you make it out to be. I've only been playing for a little while, so I've still got a ways to go before I'm any good. Same with me! I don't really have much time at all to practice, because the only time I'm awake these days is during the night, and I dare not wake people up practicing fucking bagpipes. But it, it's an ongoing struggle for me. It's just even trying to learn how to read the, the, the music, you know? I'm sure you know. People who actually are talented, I'm sure you know. But if you're talented, you probably don't. I don't know. I have a hell in my mouth! Ugh. You should pick up an instrument too, Yuri. I could definitely see you playing the violin. Yeah, that pretty much suits uh, Yuri perfectly. Uh, the violin is a beautiful instrument. I would learn the violin literally just to do the intro to The Walking Dead. Judge me all you want. I would go... I would go everywhere on a platform that has me constantly spinning in 360, just fucking hammering that. Like, I'm, my webcam's not on, because fuck it, I don't like being on camera. There, I admitted it. Just, I'm, so I'm, imagine me, it's like, just picture me, right? Frantically hammering away on... <laughs> I'm partial to the sound of the flute as well. Mm hmm. Flutes can be calm and elegant, just like you. Oh, thank you. How's it like to play the piano? It's really an enjoyable instrument to play. Not to mention, I really love how it sounds. Yeah, and the piano sounds like a carnival. And the microphone smells like a beer. One moment it can sound gentle and soothing, the next powerful and full of force. The piano's an inst That's not her talking. The piano's an instrument that I am too that I I'm familiar with too. Well, at least somewhat. My father had signed me up for piano lessons when I was younger. No I, I don't know many children that willingly sign up for some of those lessons, you know. He'd been playing it since high school and wanted to pass his passion down to me. But I never really got into it. Considering that, you think that you think I'd hate the piano. But for some reason, I find myself internally, you know, cheering on Monica. Maybe it's because it reminds me of my father in a way. Monica, you certainly are a talented individual. First starting your own club from the ground up, and now picking up the piano on a whim. I I doubt you. I'd be able to do that. Oh, don't say that. Anyone can do amazing things, as long as they have passion for it. That means, yes, I do have a bit of a passion for the bagpipes. I don't know why! I just think bagpipes sound fucking awesome. A magical instrument. It's like you, you can play them for so many scenarios, you know? And you can, like, turn, I think, any song... You could play any song you could think of on, on the bagpipes, and it would just sound awesome in the right hands. It can move you to tears when you're looking out on a landscape, reminisce during a funeral. You play them before a battle! Bef uh, at my funeral, I want the bagpipes played. But I don't want, like, Amazing Grace, that's a bit cliche. I want someone on the bagpipes, at my funeral, to play, like, Thunderstruck from ACDC. Because I want everyone there, whoever would show up, to be confused on whether or not they should be crying or attack the English. Which is why I I think we're 
Oh, going to do amazing at the festival. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Hi, Natsuki! I can't wait for the festival. It's going to be awesome! This woman probably just ate so much fucking pot because she was hating the idea of the festival. Natsuki, weren't you just protesting the festival yesterday? Well, obviously, I meant everything besides our part of the festival. I still don't like the idea of performing. Monica rolls her eyes. I don't want to start this whole debate all over again either. But I am looking forward to everything else. It's a whole day of school where you can just run around and eat till you burst. I swear to God. That if I look out that window during the festival parts and I see the girls from Kato Shoujo, this whole entire... This whole entire lot is getting aired the fuck out. Like, it's gonna be a wrap. <laughs> I'm about to air out that whole courtyard. <laughs> I can see the eagerness in Masuki's eyes. She must really like food. Kinda reminds me of a certain someone. Speaking of which, where is Siori? Oh, there you are. Siori's sitting at a desk in the back of the room, staring out the window. I walk over to her. As I do, I hear the girls continue to converse behind me. Something about squid? I've eaten squid before, it's actually really nice! I would eat squid again! I have to go to that Chinese buffet in the future if we're ever allowed to be outside our fucking homes! Hey, Siori. Why the long face? I wave my hand in front of her face. You're spacing out again. Ah ha! Ha It's just a series of noises! <laughs> Sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Are you okay? She forces a smile. It's not very convincing. Of course I am, silly! Why wouldn't I be? Because I've played the original. I've seen things. I don't know, you just seem a bit off today. Maybe I'm wrong, but my mind wanders back to what she uh, asked me as we were walking home together. <laughs> you worry too much, Ryan. I'm fine, seriously. She shows me another smile, much bigger and more genuine. Well, it seems much more Siori like there's still something inside me that feels like something's up. Siori must have noticed as she hastens to explain. Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't get much sleep last night. I'm really tired, so sorry if I'm a little cranky. <laughs> Seriously, though, I'm probably not much fun to hang around with right now. Why don't you spend time with the others? I might try and have a little nap. Um, sure. Okay. Just, uh, know that if anything's bothering you, you can talk to me, okay? I hate to see you suffering in silence. She nods. Suffering might be a little strong of a word, eh? <laughs> ah, well, you know what I mean. Siori nods again, then shoos me away. As I wander to, off to talk to Monica, that feeling of uneasiness isn't going away. Maybe that's just how Siori is these days? I mean, it's been a good few years since we properly hung out together. Maybe she's changed? Deep down, I know that isn't the reason. Still, maybe Monica knows more than I do. After all, she's the president, right? I timidly approach her. She's sh shuffling through some papers at her desk. Ryan, what's up? I decided to just jump right in. There's no point in beating around the bush. Hey, so, um... Have you noticed anything wrong with Siori recently? Wrong? What do you mean? I don't know, it's just she seems a little downcast today. So do you have any idea why she might be feeling off? Like, 
Have you seen her act this way before? Hmm. Monica is literally just us, but then again, maybe. Ma okay, we'll keep playing the part. You, 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 you and me, we'll keep playing the part like we know that we're like like we don't know what happened, like what we know. Okay, just throw me up some Japanese sign language or something, and we'll th we'll understand. No, I can't say I've ever seen her like this before. <laughs> yeah, she says she's just feeling tired because she didn't get much sleep. To be honest, I'm not buying it. She's normally upbeat and cheerful. Her, be her behavior seems so uncharacteristic. Monica peers uh, across the room at Siori, who is idly dragging a rubber racer up and down her desk. Wait, didn't she say she was going to try a nap? Maybe there is something on her mind. My question, though, is why you're asking me, Ryan? You've certainly known her longer than I have. Yeah, well, you spend more time around her recently than I have, with the club and all. I guess so. But I've never seen her dismiss me? Maybe she didn't exactly dismiss me, but it felt like she just wanted me gone. Sorry, uh, I'm just concerned for her, you know? I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, that's all. No, no. I appreciate you coming to me. It's really sweet how concerned you are for her. After all, it's important for me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Uh, you sure that's a good idea? Because the, the last time you did that, you changed her code. And then we went down a rabbit hole, girl, that we cannot come back from. She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? I know you've known Sior for longer than I have, so perhaps you're right. Still, it's worth a try. I also have to talk to her about what she wants to do for the festival anyway. Oh, alright. Fair enough, then. I just hope she's more receptive to you than she was with me. Monica pauses, studying the worried, face, my worried facial expression. The warmth of her smile reflects in her eyes. You really care about her, don't you? From what I can gather, you've been friends for a while. Yeah, we've been childhood friends for as long as I can remember. Although, before I joined the club, we've been drifting a lot. I hate thinking that she's been like this before or without me around to help her. Hey, I know it's hard, Ryan. It's never easy seeing a friend suffer. But for what it's worth, she's lucky to have someone so thoughtful looking out for her. Don't blame yourself for it. You can always be there. You can't always be there for everyone. I know she's right, but a feeling of guilt still resides. Yeah, I guess. Hey, she's in a lot happier since you joined the club, you know? Huh? Really? Yep. Yeah. She told me she was kind of surprised at first, and she didn't expect you want to join. But once she got over that, she enjoyed having you around. Anyway, I know it's hard seeing her like this. I'll talk to her and see what I can do, okay? She'll be fine, don't you worry. I sure hope so. Let's just hope you're right, Monica. Thanks, f thank you for everything, by the way. You've been a big help. <laughs> you're too kind, Ryan. Nothing to thank me for. She stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Siori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to, to Siori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Siori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica to talk to her. For some reason, I can't shake the feeling that I'm being watched. I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice that Yuri is peering over her book at me. Realizing that she's staring, she seemingly hides behind her book. Did she overhear the stuff about Siori? Perhaps she can help. I walk over to where Yuri's sitting and slide into the desk next to her. Uh oh. Ooh. Uh. I, I'm sorry if I was distracting you. I, I didn't mean to stare at you like that. Yuri, it's okay. You're not bothering me at all. 
She sighs, appearing uh, somewhat relieved. I see. Well, I, I, I couldn't help but notice you were deep in thought. Is there something on your mind, Ryan? Well, yes, actually. But how could you tell? Um... She gently flicks a page from a book back and forth, rubbing her thumb generally across the corners. I I'm usually alone with my thoughts, so I know what to look for. N n not that I was specifically watching you or anything. Uh oh dear, I, I hope you don't think that's weird of me. Don't worry about it. I think being so perceptive is kind of cool. But... <laughs> I would be. I, I don't know how to flirt, so I don't know. How, I, I've never flirted. I don't know how to flirt, so like I I, I don't know if this is coming off as flirting. <laughs> Perhaps you could help me with something. Her curiosity peaked. She folds the page she was reading slightly to mark it for later, then shuts the book and turns to me. Uh, are you sure I'm the right person for that? I do. You seem to have your head on right. <laughs> oh no! No! <laughs> I see. Well, I I'll do my best, I suppose. Okay, so I guess the main issue is actually... Have you noticed anything up with Siori? Siori? She glances over to Siori, who is totally oblivious to what's happening around her. Yeah, things just seem really different, you know? Like she's not herself. I tried to ask her about it, and she just told me she was tired. But I'm not so sure. Hmm. Yuri idly taps at her book with her finger, apparently thinking things over. That must be quite worrying for you. I I'm sorry to hear she's not feeling well. Forgive me if this isn't an appropriate question, but do you mind me asking how long you've known each other? Gosh. <laughs> Gosh. As long as I can remember, actually. We hung out a lot as kids, but as we got older, we kind of drifted apart. Since I've been coming to the club, though, I've had the opportunity to spend a little bit more time with her. Yuri nods contemptibly. Com com okay, well, perhaps she doesn't feel comfortable sharing what's ailing her? Th that's not to say she doesn't think... She doesn't think of you as a good friend. Y y you just... Um... Haven't really seen much of her love each other recently, have you? Oh, forgive me if that sounds so too harsh. I place my hand on, she on Yuri's shoulder. She tenses up for a split second, but quickly eases down again. Yuri, trust me. If you were bothering me, I'd tell you. You need to stop apologizing so much. It's really okay. So sorry, uh, I mean... I let out a soft laugh. <laughs> She's very sincere. It's quite endearing. I would understand uh, where you're coming from, though. Perhaps I'll need to work my way up to that level of connection with her again. Yuri folds her arm and tilts her head to the side, allowing her long violet uh, hair to droop down over, her de over the desk. Ryan... Have you heard of the proverb about our, th our three masks? Huh? I don't think I have. Actually, realistically, I believe I have. Oh, God. <laughs> well, to put it simply, every person has three different faces. The first is how we present ourselves to people in public. Strangers, passerbys, that sort of thing. The second is how we present ourselves to our close friends and family. The ones we hold dear to our hearts. And last is reserved only for your s oneself. It's our truest representation of our being that no one else can possibly interpret. That's actually pretty amazing. 
And oh my god, I've actually heard of that. Yuri truly seems to know what she's talking about. Notice that I said how we present ourselves, not how we feel. I think perhaps that way Siori acts the way she, she feels aren't necessarily the same. I think I understand, but what makes you bring that up? You felt as though something wasn't right from the beginning, correct? Maybe your intuition is trying to guide you towards that conclusion on its own. Of course, that's just my perspective. It's entirely possible that I'm looking too much into it. Although, I must admit, I am curious about her seemingly sudden attitude shift. I wonder what could have caused that. I assume you don't know any potential events that could have had an impact on her life, do you? Nothing comes to mind, although, as you said earlier, I'm not sure if she'd tell me anyway. She turns to face me, wearing a plaintive face. A smile! His face! Ah! I understand this must be quite frustrating for you, Ryan. You want to help her, but she won't let you. But sometimes there's only so much you can do. For now, your best bet would be simply to let her know that you're there for her without prying. I'm sure she would open up to you when she feels comfortable doing so. She's lucky to have such a thoughtful person looking out for you. That's me! Friends like that are quite hard to come by these days. Monica said something similar to me just now. I rubbed the back of my neck in embarrassment. You guys give me too much credit. I'm just doing what any friend would do, right? There's nothing extraordinary about what I'm doing for Siori. Ooh, so humble. Anyway... <clears throat> do you mind if we do some reading? I can't do anything else for Siori. But maybe I can do something for you. <laughs> I should not be allowed to interact with people. <laughs> so I might so I might as well take my mind off it. Of course. I thought we could carry on with the portrait of Markov. If that's okay with you, that is. Yeah, sure. Vowed you fine. But before we get into it, I just want to say thanks. For listening to me, I mean. You've been super supportive, even though this stuff doesn't really have anything to do with you. So, uh, I really appreciate it. You're a genuine person, Yuri. Not to mention, you've got a cool taste in literature. Uh, I don't know what to say. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, sorry. It's just that you're really mature and insightful, and for someone like me who isn't very good with emotions, you really hit the nail on the head. So sorry, I'm just not really used to people being so nice. I frown. That's kind of surprising. Sure, she's a little quiet, but she's really got her heart in the right place. <laughs> it's okay. I should uh, I should have been a bit... Uh, been a bit more mindful. Shall we start reading? If you wouldn't mind, thank you, though. I'm glad you joined the club, by the way. Is it a thing where two people making love just read from the same book at the same time? If so, what is that called? If it's not a thing, what should we call it? I'm willing to name that sex position Portrait of Markov. <laughs> <laughs> 